What's up, Mustang crew? Before ordering a replacement PCM, verify the part number is correct. Ford made a few different PCMs for the 99-04 years. The PCM is located behind the driver's side kick panel. First, disconnect the battery ground cable. Use a trim removal tool to remove the scuff plate next to the passenger seat. A Phillips screw holds the kick panel, remove it, and the panel slides out. Pull back the carpet. You don't have to disconnect those three connectors. You can just free the bracket they're on. A seven millimeter socket removes the two fasteners. To gain even more working space, you can free up those connectors, this wiring harness. Now you have easy access to the PCM. Remove this fastener that secures the clear bracket to the PCM with a 5.5 millimeter socket and loosen the bolt on the PCM's connector with a 10 millimeter socket. Remove the connector and the PCM gently slides out. As an extra precaution, I'm wearing a grounding strap that's hooked up to the vehicle's frame. The PCM slides right in. It might be easier to connect and tighten this connector before sliding it onto the bracket. Overall, this is a very easy replacement. The bolt on the PCM's connector is torqued to 53 inch pounds. The rest are snugged. Now, if the PCM was flashed to this vehicle's VIN number, then most likely the passive anti-theft system wouldn't have a problem and you would be able to drive the vehicle. Not the case here, the replacement PCM was a junkyard piece and it was not reprogrammed. It's still programmed with its original VIN number and the PATS on this vehicle is having a problem with that. The PCM and PATS modules don't recognize each other and the vehicle has been immobilized. A data trouble code of P1260 is currently stored. In a case like this, you need a scan tool that can reprogram keys to the modules. Here, I'm using the Autel MK808. It costs about 600. It's a good mid-level scanner. I went to the Immobilizer key main menu, then to the Hot Functions, Pats, and you will need two keys that can turn the ignition cylinder. That's very important. You need two keys that can turn the ignition cylinder. Blanks won't work. Before entering the programming menu, you must wait 10 minutes. There is no way around this. Ford designed it this way. After 10 minutes, we have access. First, we do a parameter reset. It says there that it's required when a new PCM or PATS module is installed. This will make the modules agree with each other. Here we see the two keys warning again. Which module have you replaced? Even though I replaced the PCM, I'm choosing the PATS. At this point, you perform an ignition key code erase. All known keys have been erased. We now program the two keys and the modules will accept them. Turn the ignition key to position zero. That means remove the key. Then disconnect the scan tool. Then cycle the two keys. It's very easy. The two keys have been reprogrammed and the vehicle starts. I'll reprogram the correct VIN number as soon as I can to the PCM, but for now, I can drive the vehicle. I hope you learned something. Have a good day!